Hi, this presentation overviews for online world stories from a smart planet as an adventure learning site. I first came across for online world in 2002 while I was a high school student and it helped me learn from many places in the world stories that were very captivating and explained a subject or a theme in greater detail, helping me empathize better with different regions of the world. As you can see from the site, which sadly is no longer running, they stopped the program in 2010. You can go to a region, click on stories from America, Africa, Europe, Middle East, South Asia, and Asia Pacific. You can watch stories by team, or you can watch stories by region or date. I'll click team because I feel that that to me has the most educational relevance because then you can see some connections that you wouldn't be able to see before, such as thinking of soccer in Ecuador, or Pakistan schools and girls, or frequent flyers, or microfinance in Kiba in Peru, or running sports and girls in track in Jamaica, scholarship in China. Those are just a few examples within one category. And then again, it has, for many years, many examples from Vietnam, Belize, China, Mexico, Conflict and violence is another topic. There's many of conflict and violence. For example, Venezuela, a nation on the edge, 2003. Environment. So again, you have some of the countries that were there before, but now in a different topic. So, the money tree in Brazil. Chile, the house Pedro built. Cameroon, a pipeline to prosperity. So, it, it mentions you know, from any country really, any area of the world in different issues, ethics and religious issues, global trade and economics, health, human rights, media press and freedoms, politics and government, science and technology, if you notice, some of them are repeated. So Venezuela, Nation on the Edge, was again on this category in politics and government. So it, it depends, right, o on the topic that they're discussing. It might be in two places. But some of these issues are very taught, very delicate. And they're an issue that you wouldn't be able to familiarize yourself in person. So there's where the adventure and the reality comes into it. Um, for example, we wouldn't be able to go to Pakistan and deal with the children of Taliban or a uh, life of a girl in Nepal so if we clicked on that one for example it has then a video most of the time the videos are kind of short this one's 14 minutes an article uh, it has background facts and related links extended interviews the rough cut as well another part that's really nice is the ability to have a reaction so you have an asynchronous discussion between people. For example, here's a response from somebody in Minneapolis that she had heard of Young Woods work in Nepal before, but this was the first time she had a chance to see it on screen, um, and she feels it's very impactful. So again, you have the chance to learn about work of amazing people. I'm going to click on one of these videos, for example, and you have, it also allows for the video to be, it has segments, uh, it has sometimes depending on the video it has uh, different versions it depends once upon a time there was a girl his name was Sabina Pinochina so again you can download that the videos as well what's impressive to me as well was that you get many reporter many reporters and different perceptions and attached to that you get um, many people that get interviewed in these communities about so many topics but all topics that are at the front line that they're of great relevance to society and the world many of these topics even though the program ended in 2010 continue to be very relevant frontline itself continues but frontline world stopped functioning as a separate entity um, 
and it, it shows one of the reasons why we need to have investigative journalism and we should keep funding programs like this and it's regrettable that they have to cut this program. Uh, if we go to the education section, which it's also divided by, in this case, not by the same teams, but teams that relate then to the K-12 classroom. They have a, an FAQ, facts, um, frequently asked questions about, you know, can you use it in your classroom? Can you use this? Can you tape it? It says you can tape it for a year. Uh, can they, will they come to speak to your students? Well, they might consider it, so you can send them an email and they'll see if they can come even to your classroom and meet you, meet you in person. So it has a lot of the same elements that uh, a good adventure learning site has. It even has ties to the literature in a lot of cases and you have teams and just many books in teams and the grade level of different books. So I, I found that to be great. Um, you can look activities. So if you have a teaching activity and you want to emphasize international culture, you can just click on culture and here you have, in this case, five different activities you could do. If we just click on one of them, Arabs and Kurds, for example, tells you the grade. In this case, tells you the activity, the graphics you can, can use with it, concept mapping in this case, and some of the links that relate to other sites may be down. But surprisingly, even though the site's no longer active, many of the resources within PBS for Online World are still working. Here, even for Gaudio, for a guide for viewing the video, so it tells you how the video is split up for the instructor to be aided by the video. It tells you the story, a transcript, uh, even a map. So if you want to pull up a map and learn a little more about the place, you have fast, facts and statistics about the place as well. Um, so I mean, anything you can think of really about all these countries throughout the world and pressing issues at least at the time they were filmed. And then relevant national standards, how it links to uh, to some of the academic goals that classrooms have. I mean, I found this to be quite impressive, quite extensive, with links to many other resources in the web. And uh, they have a very open, uh, they, they encourage the communication of students both in the site by reacting to stories and providing feedback, asynchronous feedback, or by just discussing it within the classrooms using the tools that are provided by the site. When we think of, of adventure learning and we think of, of the three parts, the principles and practice in the community, we think of the principles. Um, this has an issue in place. The issue in place is front and center. It's frontline world for a reason. So the world world is a key part of frontline world. It's stories from everywhere in the planet. Um, and they mix it to curriculum through their education section. So I feel they did a good job with that. Um, you know, it's because it's 2010 at the top and, and the, the early stage 2002, sometimes their technology, they don't have some of the newer, more interactive web 2.0 features. Uh, so in that sense, how it's, in, how it's integrated to the curriculum could be even a little bit stronger. But there is definitely that authentic narrative and that adventure base. Every story, some of the stories, some of the journalists risked a lot, sometimes their lives, to share these short stories. And again, they're short, so they can easily fit within a, a classroom activity. Uh, they're internet-driven, because the way people get them, uh, through the whole packet. Now, Frontline World, um, Frontline is part of PBS, so it's probably broadcasting services, and, and you can get, you can see the video on TV. But only in the computer system will you be able to get the additional materials, get the links, get all the other resources. So in that sense, it's internet driven. It's right there and well divided and organized. Um, so there is that pedagogical integration with the national standards. The media artifacts are there too, because uh, you have extended interviews, the raw cut as well. So you want to see a little longer of a video. And, and the sync learning opportunity comes in the sense that these are pressing issues. You you don't learn them the same week that they recorded it because it has a lot of editing and a lot of things that go there uh, behind it but uh, you learn it quite recently I mean they had bi-weekly monthly episodes of this and, and I follow them again since 2002 and then I stopped following them around 2006 but they kept going till 2010 um, if we look then at the practice of adventure learning they clearly define a, pro a problem they have a thematic problems so women's rights, environment, etc., um, and the geographical location—they share you, they share with you all that geographical data 
of a place. Um, let me see if I can quickly pull it up again. But yeah, you have uh, that those regions, and and you can, for example, look at the, this is a map. You can even click on Iceland and, and see a story from Iceland, and they have uh, one about music in Iceland. And but then you have the read more facts, so then you can learn again about the background of the country. So that's all there and the, the industry etc um, and it has a curriculum and it's designed to, to be delivered online and then for there to be collaboration even though collaboration is mainly asynchronous you definitely explore the world through the through online world that's that's what it does better than the many other things it's a it's an exploration of geographical locales by bringing you there in ways that are very um, deep and uh, personal and you can relate to the people there because it interviews many local people in, in, in these different episodes. Um, so the data is collected um, within the online environment and addressing the relationship with curricular goals. By um, you know, there's a lot of data that's shared in this environment, um, and it's shared not only through, t through the internet but also through TV. And then students get to collaborate by faculty members or teachers using the activities that are shared. So all in all, we have that adventure learning explorers content relationship between students, teachers, and experts. Um, because only their reporters in that particular time were some of the few people that were in those places recording these stories. And they were all the only ones interviewing this particular group of people or, or sometimes even researching these particular topics. So. It made it very relevant, and the experts were key because the teacher can't really go and do all that, um, and they were able to link the, the 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 world events and world problems to the curriculum, and that all that relationship with the student was there as well, uh, as the student could interact not just with the teacher and the and the activity, but they could also interact directly with the experts by communicating to the site and even asking the experts to sometimes drop in and, and come to the class. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I'm very sad that they are no longer there. The Hewitt Foundation and Shell uh, were some of their promoters. And it's really, really sad. But now you can go to Frontline and uh, look at their, their site as they, they are right now, which is the main Frontline. They still address world issues, but not in the same way. Uh, the way they had that part of the world is no longer there as much. They still have world issues, but it isn't a particular emphasis, the world. So uh, I, I wish it came back. I, I think it should. Thanks.